Hi everybody, happy Wednesday. Um, so here we are. I think this will be the final Twix video because we're nearly at the end of this story. I hope you've enjoyed your time with these beastly people. And if you remember, the birds and the monkeys were ready to get their own back. They'd spent a long time putting things onto the ceiling of the Twit's house with the hug tight sticky glue. And then Mr. and Mrs. Twit had just returned from the gun shop with their new shiny shotguns. Can you remember what the Ravens did yesterday? Yep, that's right. They splatted some glue onto the Twit's heads. But do you remember what Mr. and Mrs. Twit thought had happened? They thought the birds had... Uh, on their heads didn't they so they didn't bother to check it so they're going to be in for a bit of a surprise i think so this chapter this final chapter is called the twits are turned upside down what's this gasped mr twit as they entered the living room what's happened screamed mrs twit imagine coming home and seeing everything stuck on the ceiling You'd be shocked, wouldn't you? <gasps> they stood in the middle of the room, looking up all the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side tables, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric fire, the carpet. Everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. The pictures were also upside down and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What's more, secretly, the monkeys had painted it to look like the ceiling. Look! Screamed Mrs. Twit, pointing at the floor. That's the floor! The floor's up there! This is the ceiling! We're standing on the ceiling! We're upside down, gasped Mr. Twit. We must be upside down. We're standing on the ceiling looking down at the floor. Oh, help! Mrs. Twit screamed. Help, help! I'm starting to feel dizzy. Oh! So am I, so am I, cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one bit. We're upside down. Oh, and all the blood's going to my head. If we don't do something quickly, I think I'm going to die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. Let's stand on our heads. Then we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads. And of course, the moment their top of their head touched the floor, the glue did its job. They were stuck there. They were pinned down, cemented glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped out of their cage as soon as Mr. and Mrs. Twit had gone past, and the roly-poly bird was there as well. All the other birds flew down to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. Oh my gosh. That evening, Mugglewump and his family went up to the big wood on top of the hill and in the tallest tree that they could find they built a marvellous tree house. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows, the rooks and the magpies made their nests around the house as well so that nobody would be able to see them from the ground. You can't stay up here forever you know, the roly-poly bird said. Why not? said Mugglewump. This is really nice. Just you wait till winter comes, the roly-poly bird said. Monkeys and cold weather really don't mix. They most certainly do not, cried Mugglewump. I hadn't thought about that. Are the winters very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly-poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold a bird will wake up in the morning with their feet frozen to the nest. Then what should we do? asked Mugglewump. My family might get deep frozen. No, they won't, 
said the roly poly bird, because when the leaves start falling from the trees in autumn, you can all fly home to Africa. Don't be ridiculous, Mugglewump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the roly poly bird. I shall take you there one at a time. You will travel by roly poly superjet, and it won't even cost you a penny. And down here in the horrible house, Mr. and Mrs. Twit are still stuck upside down in their living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr. Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old crow, who went hopping around shouting, we're upside down, we're upside down. And you're the one who said to stand on our heads, you whiskery old warthog screamed Mrs. Twit. Now we'll never get free. We're stuck here forever. You might be stuck here forever, said Mr. Twit, but not me. I'm getting us out of this. Mr. Twit wiggled and he squirmed and wormed. He twisted and turned. He choggled and churned. But the sticky glue held him right in place, just like it had done for the birds on the big dead tree. He was still upside down, and he was still on standing on his head. But heads are not made to be stood upon. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrible thing starts to happen. And this is where Mr. Twit got the biggest shock of all. With so much weight from up above, his head started to get squished into his body. Quite soon, it had disappeared completely sunk out of sight in fatty folds around his neck. I'm swimming and burbled Mr. Twit. So am I, cried Mr. Twit. Help me, help me, poor doctor, yelled Mr. Twit. I'm getting the shrinks. And so he was. Mrs. Twit was getting the shrinks as well. And this time it wasn't a fake shrink was a real one. Their heads shrank into their necks. Their necks started shrinking into their bodies. Their bodies began shrinking into their legs. And their legs began shrinking into their feet. And one week later, they were gone. Completely vanished. There was a man came along the street, called Fred. He came round to read the gas meter. When nobody answered the front door, Fred peeked into the house, and there he saw, on the floor of the living room, two bundles of old clothes, two pairs of shoes, and a walking stick. There was nothing more left in the world of Mr. and Mrs. Twit, and everyone that knew them including Fred, all shouted, Hooray! I guess the Twits weren't liked by many people at all, if, when they vanished, people were celebrating. Well, that was the end of the Twits. I think you could say Mr and Mrs Twit got what they deserved. Maybe you think they didn't. Maybe you think Roald Dahl maybe wrote a pretty mean ending. But I think after all the nasty things that they've done in that story, they got their just desserts. So if you want to recap some of this story, maybe you've enjoyed the twits a lot. Why don't you draw and maybe you can write a short uh, paragraph underneath of your favourite part of the story. Maybe it was when you first we first discovered that the Twits were playing pranks on each other all the time. Not very nice pranks, though. Maybe you think that Mugglewump and his family and the roly-poly bird were a happy part of the story and they came up with a great plan. Maybe you like the way the birds and the monkeys stuck all of Mr and Mrs Twit's things onto the ceiling and tricked them and made them turn upside down. So if you want to do that, that can be a little activity that you can do this week. It doesn't have to be today. You can. Do your own uh, few days worth of, of things if you want to. 
I'd love to see what you produce, though. And uh, if you would like another Roald Dahl story, if you email um, the Year 2 team at compassprimary.org, um, if you'd like me to read another Roald Dahl book, or if you've got a suggestion for another story that I could read, and if I've got it at school, I'll try and dig it out and find it. Okay? Happy home learning, guys. It's Wednesday. It's nearly the end of the week again. Okay? Hope you're all well, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.